So the first thing that you want to do is pull your free fuel pull there. Step one, pull your fuel pull there. Today, I will be showing you how to diagnose if you have a bad fuel pump relay. The reasons you want to know if you have a bad fuel pump relay, obviously if you have a no start condition, uh, which happens frequently on the Mazda 626.net forums, most of the time that's going to be because of a bad distributor, or more specifically a camshaft position sensor inside the distributor or on the fifth gens, a coil pack, and the crankshaft position sensor. But every once in a while you'll get a bad fuel pump relay or a bad fuel pump. So in order to know if fuel is getting there and you don't have a fuel pressure tester, uh, probably you want to check your relay. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's real quick, real simple, real easy. The tools that you will need to complete this task are two lengths of jumper wire and a multimeter. And on the fourth gen, your fuel pump relay is labeled as circuit relay NFO2. And on the fifth gens, it will be your fuel pump relay will be around in this area. Will probably be around in this area right here. On the fifth gen, there are one, two, three relays, and then it's the next one over. On the fourth gen, really easy, it's green, it stands out. Now, the European or E spec versions, I'm not sure where your fuel pump relay is, or for the Ford Probe or Protege or Telstar for that matter. So make sure you check your workshop manual and get a fuse box layout diagram and make sure that you get the correct relay. Uh, they will not always be labeled as fuel pump relay because as you saw my particular one was labeled as circuit relay nfo2 so it's not going to be just labeled fuel pump relay and i don't know why they do that step one pull your fuel pump relay <clears throat> Ta -da. there are different configurations for the fuel pump relay between the fourth gen and the fifth gen this is the fourth gen relay here's pins a b c d what you want to do is jumper pin A with battery positive voltage, so you would jumper that positive, jumper B negative, and then check for continuity between C and D. On the fifth gen, it's a little bit different. You want to jumper this pin with battery positive voltage, jumper with ground, and then test for continuity between E and F. And I know that doesn't make any sense since it goes A, B, E, F. And if you notice, there is no easy way of sticking your battery positive down here. You can squish your battery negative down on there, but battery positive not, is not going to stay. And that's going to make things complicated because you have to hold battery positive against here and test continuity with your multimeter on these two pins so it's going to be a juggling act and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that while I'm filming. Alright so here's battery negative. Let's squish that down in there. So something, ah crap a little. See that's just one of, okay something like that. Hear that click? Clicking is a good sign. If it doesn't click, it means your solenoid is probably shot. The next step is to hold this pin so that this stays open and then test for continuity on these two pins. Probably going to be best if I can wedge this in somewhere. Set your multimeter to continuity. And when you have continuity, it'll beep. That's a fairly easy way to know it if you have continuity so it doesn't have to take very long so we're going to try and wedge this I know you're not going to be able to see it but I've already explained how you do it so hopefully that's going to be good enough for demonstration purposes you're good that's a good fuel pump relay and then just plug your fuel pump relay back in and that's all there is to testing your fuel pump relay cool Yay!